Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 6A. This is the first of a series of three tutorials focused on accounting for restructuring of troubled debt. Tutorial 6A will focus on settlement of restructured debt. Tutorial 6B will focus on troubled debt restructuring with minor modification. And Tutorial 6C will review troubled debt restructure with a substantial modification. This tutorial has four learning objectives. The first objective will be to review accounting for settlement of troubled debt from the, both the debtor and creditor perspectives. The second learning objective will be to review and apply any present value concepts that are relevant to accounting for troubled debt. The third learning objective will be to review the treatment of a gain on restructured debt for the debtor. And finally, the fourth learning objective will be to review the creditor impairment of restructured and settled debt. This tutorial is based on the Flockhart Industries A example that deals with settlement of troubled debt. So please make sure that you download the correct file and preview the information provided so that we can proceed. Assuming you've done that, we will now look at requirement one, which is to prepare an amortization schedule for the note. Okay, so let's begin. Again, requirement one is the amortization table for the note between Flockhart and BSL. What we have here is a note starting on January 1st, 2020, with the last payment due December 31st, 2024. So this is a five-year note with five payments, and the present value is calculated as follows. We have 5N for five years. The effective interest rate used to discount this is 7%, and so this table is based on a 7% yield. The payment is $23,750. And we know the future value must end up being $475,000. Calculating the present value should give you $436,048. Then, on January 2nd, 2023, BSL agrees to accept a plot of land owned by Flockhart with a fair value of $350,000 in full settlement of the note. And the land had an original cost of $425,000. The important point here that we're going to have to deal with is the date of January 1st, 2023. What we must do then is determine what the carrying value of the note is on January 1st, 2023, which is the same as December 31st, 2022. If we were to go through the amortization schedule with payments of $23,750 every year using the effective interest rate approach, we would end up with $457,824. We could also confirm this using a revised present value calculation where we have 2N7IY23,750 payment and the original 475,000 future value that will also give you 457,824. So basically all you would have to do is take the original PV calculation from the previous slide and just change 5N to 2N because there are two payments remaining. Now we can proceed with requirement number two, which basically follows the settlement on January 1st, 2023, where now we will have to prepare the journal entries to record the settlement of the notes payable for both Flockhart and BSL on January 1st, 2023. Here's how we record it for Flockhart. We're going to debit the note payable for the current value of 457,824. Again, this is with 2N remaining. That's the value at December 31st, 2022, or January 1st, 2023, from the amortization table. We're going to credit land for 425,000 because the note is being settled in exchange for land with a cost. This is the original cost of the land. Then we have a loss on disposal of land determined to be the book value of 425 minus $350,000 because the land has a fair value of 350 and it's carrying value of 425. So that's where we have this loss of $75,000 here. And basically, the last item, the gain on restructure of debt, is a plug or calculated number to make the journal entry balance because our debits must equal credits. We end up with a credit necessary to make this work, and we're going to record a gain on restructuring of the debt. And the description, of course, would be to record the settlement of the debt to BSL. Now we can proceed to do the journal entries for BSL. 
In settlement of the note, BSL is going to accept land with a fair value of $350,000. So that's going to be a debit to land. It's going to credit the note receivable for the carrying value of $457,824. We presume that both Flockhart and BSL are amortizing the note the same way. So the journal entries and the timing of all of the interest expense and everything is the same for both. Then we just have a difference between the two. It's going to be a debit necessary to make the debits equals credits. And we have a loss on impairment then of $107,824. And the losses impairment is equal to the carrying value of the debt less the fair value of the land that's being brought in. And that's all there is to it. And now for some key points to remember. First, of course, when a debt is settled, the debt is derecognized and all amounts relating to that debt and any unamortized discounts or premiums are removed from the debtor's accounts. A gain by the debtor is usually recorded, and that was the case here for Flockhart, since the creditor grants a concession when there is a troubled debt restructuring. The creditor will also remove the debt from the accounts and record a loss. In addition, the debtor, in this case Flockhart in our example, will settle the account by transferring an asset such as property, plant or equipment, in our case it was land, that may have been used to secure the note or a loan foreclosure by issuing shares or by cash proceeds received from the new debt obtained from the creditor. And finally, if the creditor or lender can reasonably estimate the impaired cash flows, then an entry is made to record the debt impairment. And the impairment amount is basically calculated as the difference between the carrying value at amortized cost and the present value of any estimated impaired cash flows. So this concludes tutorial 6a. You can now proceed to tutorial 6b to review minor modifications of troubled debt and tutorial 6c for substantial modifications. We hope you found this tutorial useful.